Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman Wargamer. It's been a little while since I've done a video, but that was because uh, my old computer decided to give up the ghost and die on me. But we're back and we're going to do a playthrough of a game called Halls of Hegra. And this is a prototype version of the game kindly sent to me by Tom Pick Games. So thank you very much for allowing me to uh, have an early look at the game. Designed by Petter Olsen, it concerns something called the Battle of Hegra Fultris, which is in Norway. So what's it all about? Well, the Battle of Hegra Fultris was a 25-day engagement in the 1940 Norwegian campaign of the Germans, which saw a small force of Norwegian volunteers fighting numerically superior German forces from a fortified position. And this game simulates that battle. So I tell you what, let's have a look at the board and how this solitaire game is set up. So here's the map in all its glory, and some do say that this solitaire only war game is in the same vein as Robinson Crusoe or this war of mine. And the mechanics that this game employs are things like worker placement, bag building, and tower defense. So lots going on. And as you can see, quite a busy board. And this gives an overview of what's going on during the battle and how you can move your men and volunteers to do things. And you are actually the commander. And I believe his name was Hans Ryder Holterman. And on the board at the moment, we can see cubes, which indicate values on certain tracks. And hopefully those will become clear as the game progresses. Down the bottom of the board, we have the turn track. And the game has 11 turns split into these different phases. We've got mobilization, first attack, Siege 1, Siege 2, and incorporated into Siege 2, we've got the last stand. And those phases are controlled by these five sets of cards. Below those decks, we've got this area where our force will try and go behind enemy lines to either get supplies or to open up new supply routes. Over to the left here, we've got this panel, which actually doesn't uh, apply to us until we get to siege. And this includes aerial bombardment and some artillery being moved in. Down the bottom here, we can see our supply tracks. And down here are the boxes which the units will use. When they've completed an action, they will go into the tired box. And during consecutive turns, they will move up and eventually get ready to do some more actions. Down here we've got an area which includes some guns, which as you can see are all cracked and broken, and will need repairing before the Germans arrive, hopefully, and a couple of actions that can be done. The actions are denoted by the Norwegian flags, so any area with the Norwegian flag denotes an action our units can do, and just over to the right of that, we've got an area for our artillery, but again, you can see they're damaged, broken, have got to be repaired. Here we've got some maintenance actions we can do. Any units that get injured have to go to the infirmary. And down here, we've got our morale section, which is uh, going to be very important as the game progresses. And right down the bottom is how likely we are to surrender. But hopefully all this will become a little clearer as we play. So just to finish setting up, we have some German patrols, which will be going out and looking for our supplies. And so will hamper us on this map here. And those are drawn randomly. So we pop those into a bag. We've got another bag, which will become important during the siege phase. And this will be loaded up as the game progresses and uh, most of them are bad. But to start off with, we're gonna put a German artillery token and a miss token, which is the only good thing in these bags. If we pull one of those, nothing happens. And lastly, let's look at the units. So there are five types of unit in the game. 
And you can see them here. This one is an officer and we only get one of those. The red ones are soldiers. This is green and as you can see, I've put a little white dot on it because as some of you know, I'm colorblind. So I have a little difficulty sorting out the, the red and the green. So I've put that on there, but fear not, because as I've said, this is a prototype version. In the production version, I understand some of the colors may change, but they will have icons on these counters. So even if you're like me, you'll be able to distinguish which unit is which. These green ones are the hunters. We've got volunteers in blue and medical staff in white. Also, there are these. They're doubt tokens and you'll grow to hate these as you play the game, but we'll explain what that's all about as we go along. So that's the units. In an area called the reserve, we're going to place six doubt tokens, three soldiers and three volunteer units along with all the other counters that we're going to be using during the game, and these, the German infantry. In the tired, rest and ready area, we're going to place our officer, two volunteers and three soldiers in the ready box, and the rest of the units, which includes one doubt token, go into a bag to be pulled during the turns. And there we are, I think we're ready to start. Also included in the prototype is a prototype player aid. But I dare say when the production copies start rolling off the conveyor belt, this will be a much sturdier, better looking thing. But for now, this is great because it splits up all the phases and tells you exactly what you need to do. So we're starting off in the mobilization phase. And that phase entails our units trying to explore the fortress, which you can see here on the map. They've got to dig out snow to try and find some special items hidden away. And these are represented by these cards here and try to repair some of this broken equipment that we saw earlier. Also, we're trying to increase our force by recruiting new volunteers, soldiers and medical staff and maybe send out some units to go scavenging for supplies or indeed to scout out and open up new supply routes. But three turns only before the Germans arrive. So as I always say, you will play this game completely different. And if I make any misplays, I'll try to catch them when I edit the video, but if I miss any and you're familiar with this game, then uh, feel free to leave a comment. It will help everyone, especially me. Right, here we go then. So the first thing we do is to pick a mobilization card, but let's give them a little shuffle first. Everything has been shuffled, but uh, I don't trust me either. Here we go. Some of the volunteers want to go home. So the weather is going to be bad. It's going to snow. We've got to move the fear and doubt markers up one. Oh dear. And this is used when uh, the card says to injure some defenders, but uh, doesn't say that. Right, let's sort that out. So the weather has turned bad. It is snowing. Now this track here is to do with shoveling snow. And if we use actions to push this marker up to the left hand side, we can pick one of these snow cards which contain lots of goodies. However, when it's snowing, we have to move this marker back one to make it more difficult to clear the snow, obviously, because it's snowing. So that's not good. We've now got to move the fear and doubt markers one level up. At the end of the third turn, a coup will happen, and the number on the fear track at the end of that mobilization phase will determine how many defenders we have to remove from our bag, which isn't a good thing. 
So we need to try and get that down as much as possible. Also, the doubt track tells us how many doubt counters to put in. At the moment, it's one. So we're going to move both of these up. This isn't good. Four defenders at the moment will be removed from that bag. We still only add one doubt token, though, which is what we're going to do now because that's what that means. So here we go. Here's another doubt token into the bag. Next, we're going to draw from our recruit bag. We can draw up to four defenders. However, if we draw one of the doubt tokens, we have to stop and the defenders we have drawn, we have to pick one of those and the others go over to the reserve and the doubt token gets put back in the bag. But at the moment, we've only got the two. So the chances of us not pulling a doubt token are quite good for this first turn. Because as you'll see, every turn of the mobilization phase, we will be adding another doubt token. So let's see how we go. Up to four. It's a soldier, whoops, which will just pop here for a moment. It does say put it into the recruit area. Let's try it again. Oh, another soldier. Shall we? Yes, let's try. Come on, let's be lucky. Ah, it's a medic. Shall we? Yes, let's. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Here we go, last time. It's a volunteer. Wonderful. These now go over to join the rest of the defenders in the ready box. The good thing about volunteers is when you recruit those, they bring along a supply. So that's good. Right. Next on the player aid, it says to move any defenders that are here on the rest area into the ready box. As you'll see in a moment, it costs supplies to move defenders from the tired to the ready area. But if you're a bit low on supplies, you can put up to two in this rest area for free and then the following turn they will move into the ready area. But we don't have anybody in these areas at the moment. So now we have to move these defenders from the ready area to the action spaces. So let's do that. We can move our defenders onto any of these action spaces in any order but when we go to resolve them we have to do them in the order that they're numbered in so first thing to do do we want to open a new supply route it will cost two defenders we've got a little times two there we might have to think about that this one i want to do because this will allow us to move one of these markers back down one. We're negotiating with the defenders at the moment. Their fear and doubt is quite high. They're wondering whether or not they're doing the right thing. This again costs two defenders or the officer. So I think we'll use the officer for that. We may do another one. Bring them both down. What I want to start to do is repair these defensive positions. I think I made note in the video, but um, I called them guns. But no, they're defensive positions which have to be repaired. So we might do one of those. That again costs two. So let's use a couple of volunteers for that. Can't use the officer for some of these. I assume it's because he's got more important things to do. Bolster will allow us to increase the defense of the fortress, which, as you'll see, is a 
important thing to do. So let's do that. Supply runs. We can send out a defender on this supply route to pick up one of these. And those supplies are for supplies. And if we bring one of those back to the fortress, we'll get extra supplies. While we're here, let's have a quick look at the other routes. This one is to allow us to remove German patrols, which will show up and get placed in the spaces here. We've got this supply route which when these get back, allow us to add a miss token to the hit bag. And lastly, this one will allow us to increase our morale. But at the moment it is snowing, which means if we send a defender out, they can only move four spaces. So it's gonna take another turn to get there. But I think we better start to see if we can get some supplies back. So I know it's not ideal, but we're going to use a soldier to make his way through the snow and try and get some supplies back. We've got four left. These tracks have got a habit of getting out of control. So I think I'll use another couple of defenders to do this again mainly to try and get this fear track down. Two more. We could repair one of the guns or another defensive position, or to try and start shoveling snow. Let's do that. Let's use these two to shovel snow, which will bring it down to here, which will make it easier to get to the end. Again, you will play this game completely different. But there we are, that's, uh, that's the actions. Now we have to resolve them. And we start here. So we've got our negotiates. We're gonna pop the defenders into the tired area. We're gonna move that one down. And we're gonna move this one down. This doesn't happen yet. So we move over to the fire artillery. No, they're still broken. So it's the supply run. So here we are, here's the fortress, he's off. But we can only move up to four. One, two, three, four, doesn't quite make it. But there we are. We're now in the maintenance part. So we're gonna shovel snow. We've got two defenders there, so we can move that marker two to the left to bring us nearer here. So we can pick one of these good snow cards. Repair. We said we're going to repair one of our defensive positions. Unfortunately, it doesn't disappear. It goes into this hit bag and can be drawn again. And if it is, it's damaged again. And bolster. We're bringing up our defense up one, and you'll see how that works when the Germans arrive. That's all our actions. Next, we check the infirmary and see if there are any patients that are in one of our three beds and move those up nearer the top so they can get back into action. But no. We now check the morale track. There are some modifiers. At the moment, we're at zero, so nothing is happening. Ideally, we need to keep pushing this up so we can draw our high morale cards. Not sure if I've shown you those. Some good stuff in these. But if the marker gets pushed down into the negative, we have to pick the not so nice low morale cards. So here's the modifiers. This X mobilization doubt marker is if the doubt marker gets down to one of these two bottom spaces and we will add one or two morale to our track. But no, 
The rest are minus ones. Red day, we'll show you those when we look at the turn track. But no, we're not out of supply yet. We've got no defenders in the waiting area. As I said, we've got three beds. If we get another patient, they have to wait. And the longer they wait, the more they drop. And if they get here, oh dear. And that's another minus for each defender in the morgue and a minus one for any German infantry in red sectors, which we'll see in the next phase. We now check to see our surrender status. And there is another little modifier table here. If it ever gets up to the skull and crossbones, we've lost. And it goes up if we've got defenders in the morgue, four or more defenders in this waiting area, six artillery pieces on the map, and in the siege, fewer than the required number of healthy defenders left, which is this number here, but that applies later on in the game. At the moment, no, we're fine. Red spaces, here they are on the turn track, so that will affect the morale. And lastly, we've got to check the turn track for German patrols. We're not doing the coup, retreat, or the last stand yet. So here we can see two little German patrol icons. So we're going to pick a couple of those and put them on the supply map. And we will be on turn two. So we've got our German patrols in the bag. We're going to take two of those. What we don't want is uh, one there. They're going to go in this row because this is for the mobilization. Here's the first attack. Siege one and siege two. Here's one. Here's another one. What have we got? Number three. Well, that's all right. And number five. Not too bad. But as the game goes on, this may well get inundated with German patrols. But that's it. That's the end of the turn. We've moved the turn track marker. We're now on to turn two. So time to pick the second mobilization card. I tell you what, I haven't successfully completed this game. This game is unforgiving, but let's see how far we get this time on video. Here we go. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, it's sunny. One of our trucks drove off the road and crashed. And that's why we've got two injured defenders. Doubt token in the bag, we're still on number one, and then we're going to pick our new lot of defenders. Right, let's sort this one out. So it is sunny, which means we can move up to six spaces. We have to injure two defenders, and this is where this comes in. We're going to injure hunters first. We haven't got any. They come from the tired area, by the way. So the next one down, we've got to injure two soldiers. That's no good. I'll add the next doubt token. So we're ready for that. Pop that there for a moment. And we've got to put those injured defenders into the beds. Right. And get rid of that. Pop that there. We actually need to throw a couple of dice to find out how badly injured they are. Not too bad. One goes on the four, one goes on the five. So this one will be out soon and back in the tired area. We've added the doubt disc. Now we draw up to four. We're not going to do four, I don't think. Let's see. Here we go. What we got? It's a soldier. Now, it's worth doing a, a second time because if we draw a doubt token, we stop and keep that one. 
Let's hope it don't draw one though. Oh, Hunter. I'm gonna be a bit careful and I'm gonna leave it there. We've got two. Hunters are good because unlike other defenders on the supply map, when they come back laden with goodies, they have to move one less than they did before because they're laden down. However, the hunters being strong outdoor types don't get affected by that so they can nip up, nip back if we have good weather. So that's uh, why I'm stopping. These go into the ready area. Now we would move any defenders that are in the rest area into the ready area, but we don't have any. So we're going to use supplies to bring in these tired defenders into the ready area. So for each supply, we can bring four defenders in. So one, two, three, and a volunteer. Now we've got to be careful if we use this supply to bring the rest in, there's only three. When we come to do the morale over here, we'll be out of supply, so this will move down one. So what I think we'll do, we don't need the medic to move these up any quicker. They're gonna be fine, they're not seriously injured. So we're gonna pop two of those into the rest area. Now we can spend our actions. Let's try and bring these down, or at least this one down. So we'll use our officer again to negotiate. I'm going to use the hunter to go on a supply run. I'm gonna actually open up a new supply route so we'll use two of those. Now we've only got two left. Do we shovel snow? Do we repair one of these? Do we bolster our defense again? These are gonna be needed in the next phase, these defensive positions. So I think we'll repair another one of these. Not so many defenders this time. Right, let's resolve them starting here. Open a new supply route. I tend to open this one because it's morale. It's the longest route, if you like, of six spaces instead of five. But morale is very important. So there we are. That's our second supply route opened. Back down to negotiate. We're going to bring this fear down again. Not defending the walls, no artillery is ready yet. So, back up here for the supply run. So our soldier here reaches the supply and has to stop. Now, a bit of a dilemma. Do we send this one up here or to the morale supply? Because we can move six and that will get us straight up here. We do get supply from the other types. It's just this one we get extra supply. So I think we'll move that up six. It's a lovely sunny day. So where are we going? Going here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we're back down here. Maintenance, no shoveling snow. Repair. So repairing another defensive position, which goes back into the hit bag. That's everything done. We're in the infirmary, so each one can move up. This one moves out and back into the tired area. So it wasn't too bad. Morale, no. No, no, we've still got supply, thank goodness. Just the one though. Nope, nothing there. That stays on zero, so no cards. Surrender, we're still okay here. And the turn track does not have any German patrols on it. So we move it up. This is turn three, the last turn of mobilization. Here we are, we need this card to be kind to us. 
Oh dear. That looks okay. That looks okay. Snowing again. Bad news for our hunter. We lose a morale. We must move the doubt marker one level up. Will anyone help us? Usual thing, doubt marker in the bag and we draw. So it's snowing, movement is much slower. We lose a morale, so down it comes. And if it stays there, we're gonna draw two low morale cards and resolve one of them. Not very good. Doubt marker, up one level. That's still on one, thank goodness. And being the last turn of mobilization, it will be the last time a doubt token is added to the recruit bag. But another one goes in now and we can draw up to four. Let's get rid of that. Here we go. These bags need to be a little bit bigger for my big hands, but we've got another medic. Let's do it again, nothing to lose, picking two of these. If I can grab hold of one, hold on, here we are. It's another volunteer. Do we do a third? I've got a feeling we'll need some more defenders. Yeah, let's try a third, here we go. Oh, it's a soldier. Right, I'm stopping there. These go over here. And looking at the player aid, drawn our defenders. Move from rest to ready. These can come in to the ready and we're gonna spend supplies. Now that's again, look. Because it's snowing, nobody is gonna get back on this uh, supply map. If we spend that, it's gonna knock down our morale again. It's already at minus one. Oh dear. Yeah, we've got to, we need, we need to do lots of stuff this turn. So we'll use our last supply. So one, two, three, four and two in the rest area. And our medic will stay tired. Okay, time for actions. We're not gonna open a new supply route. I'm quite happy with those two, but I will negotiate to try and bring this down. Another one. We'll wait until the next phase to repair these but i want to repair our last defensive position so a couple of oh no wrong one will a couple of volunteers to repair that the bolster our defenses Let's move this up. So we're going to inspire. I think we've got two left, haven't we? Yes. We're going to send out two more <laughs> supply runs. Yeah, every game is different <laughs> with this. I've not run out of supply <laughs> before, so this is all new to me. But those are the actions placed. Now we resolve them. Not opening a supply route, but we are negotiating to bring that down to one. So it looks like we're gonna be losing one defender from the bag, no artillery. So let's do the supply runs. So first of all, we'll start to bring this defender back. It's snowing and they are going to have a minus one movement because they're carrying a delivery token. So that's not good. One, two, three, still not getting home. The hunter though is not affected by this minus one, but 
and still only move four in this driving snow. One, two, three, four. It doesn't get home. We'll send one of these up here. So that's four. One, two, three, four. Not quite. This one is six. And this one will have to go here. But all being well, they'll both get on this space next turn. There we go, that's the supply runs. Onto the maintenance area, no snow shoveling, but repair. Our last defensive position is repaired for the moment. And we're going to bolster the defenses. So it's up to two. And we're going to bring the morale token up back to zero. That will come back down, but at least it's not at minus two. There we go. The infirmary, this one is now feeling much better and goes back into the tired area. Morale, here we go. No, no, but out of supply, minus one. No defenders in the waiting area or in the morgue, and the Germans haven't arrived yet. So, draw two low morale cards and pick one of them. Let's give them a shuffle. This isn't going to be good. One, two. Pop them there for a moment. And what have we got? We have to use this part of the track, a bit reminiscent of the leader games from DVG. Add one despair card to the high morale deck. I'll show you what that means in a minute. Or remove one miss token from the hit bag. Oops, sorry about that. These are the despair cards. And if these are chosen, you must do it. And you've got to injure one defender and we remove this card from the game. And they go into the high morale deck. So you can't tell when you pick one of these bad ones. Yes, I think we'll remove the miss token from the hit bag. Let's empty that out. What have we got? We've only got the one. So we'll get rid of that, put the rest back in the bag. The one we used is discarded, and this one goes back into the low morale deck and is shuffled in. And that now goes back to zero, thank goodness. I think that's everything there. Nothing is happening in the surrender, not yet anyway. So we just have to check the turn track. Oh no, we've got to do the coup now. But look, two more German patrols. So let's do that first and then the coup. Actually, we'll get rid of those mobilization cards. They're finished with. And a good thing about the game is you have more cards than you need, so you're going to get lots of replayability and variability with the game. But two more. We do not want them here. They're still going to go on this, on this uh, row here. Let's see what we get. One there. And one there. Two, that's okay, and oh, six. So that's the German patrols, now it's coup time. Resolve this at the end of day three. First, draw X discs from the recruit bag and place them in the reserve. X is where the fear marker is. Redraw any doubt discs, so one, has to be removed. 
which could have been worse. This is why I tend to concentrate on this track. Okay, let's see what we get. Yeah, bigger bags for my hands. Oh, it's a volunteer. So we've lost the volunteer. They've decided to go home. It's getting a bit uh, hairy for them. So that's done. Next, move the supply marker one step to the right. So now each supply marker will only move three defenders across. Supplies are getting harder to get hold of. Place one defender on each defensive position not covered by damage tile. Another reason I did these, let's just move this up a little bit. Take these defenders from the tired, rest or ready areas. If we place three soldiers, we'll get a plus one on the morale, four soldiers, a plus two. This one's always free. So let's place those on there. We can only place three. The others are out on the uh, supply runs. But we'll pop a volunteer there. So we're fully manned and because we've got three soldiers. So that goes up one, lovely. And lastly, which is one of the things I like about this game, flip the mobilization board. So we can get rid of those, thank goodness. And we flip this over for the first attack. Oh, and just to finish off, we mustn't forget to move the turn marker. We're on turn four. And I think this will be a convenient place to stop. Part one of a playthrough of Halls of Hegra, published by Tompic Games and designed by Petter Shank Olsen. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And yes, I have quickly reviewed the video and missing out our supply from our volunteer. I think we'll put that down to experience. I'm not going to redo that. But just remember, your volunteers bring along their supplies. Well, apart from that, I hope the playthrough went okay without too many misplays. But if you did enjoy it and you haven't done so already, it would be great if you would consider subscribing to the channel. It does help. Also, pushing that like button of the video, the thumbs up, helps tremendously as well. And if you want to be informed of other content the channel uploads, then push the bell. As always, I encourage you to leave a comment. Not only if I've made a misplay and you're letting me know, that's great, but just tell me what you think. Have you pre-ordered this? Are you thinking now of doing the late pledge? But whatever you comment, I love to read them. Thanks as always to my subscribers. Thank you very much. And a quick plug, as always, just before I go, if you want to support the channel a little bit further, well, now you can. You can buy the channel a coffee, and I'll leave a link in the description below, or push the uh, super thanks button underneath this video. And those donations really help, so thank you. So I hope you can join me for part two of the playthrough when the Germans arrive. But until then, as always, you take care, and goodbye.